All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us on our first monthly Squirrel webinar. My name is Megan Funk. I'm on the customer success team here at Squirrel Systems, and I will be your host today. Presenting today's webinar is Patrick Paris, sales and systems engineer. And we also have Cyrus Sai, our senior product marketing manager who is working behind the scenes today. We hope you find this session useful as we all navigate these challenging times to our industry. The purpose of today's webinar is to educate you on the features and benefits of our latest software, Squirrel version 11, and the enhancements we have made to help you increase your revenue through the multiple channel options available. We know how difficult this crisis has been on the hospitality industry, and we have a lot of new and exciting features that can help you and your business during this time. Before we begin, there are just a few housekeeping items I need to go over. Today's webinar is scheduled to last about 30 minutes with a Q&A session at the end. All attendees will be muted during the presentation. If you have a question at any time, please post in the questions tab and Cyrus will be addressing them at the end. This webinar will be recorded and published for viewing. We will share those details in a communication afterwards. At the end of the presentation, we will have a post webinar survey. Uh, we would greatly appreciate any feedback you could provide us. Today's webinar will be presented by Patrick Paris, our senior sales and systems engineer. Patrick has been with Squirrel for over 20 years and has worked with all manner of customers from large casino operations to multi-unit chains uh, to single unit owner operators. His knowledge and expertise will be shown here today as he goes over the contents of this webinar. With that said, I will pass the session over to Patrick to take us through the presentation. Patrick, go ahead. Oh, thanks very much, Megan. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. We appreciate you taking the time today to talk to us about how Squirrel version 11 uh, with our digital ordering experience um, products can really help your business in this unique time. Okay. Uh, 2020 was an extremely challenging time for each and every one of us. Um, and that is especially true for the hospitality industry that we all work with. The good news is dining rooms are beginning to open up again in various parts of North America, depending on where you are. Some people still in lockdown, some people still starting to come out. Down where I am, we're seeing a rapid reopening, restaurants at full capacity, bars open, things like that. So it's good to start getting back to um, some type of a norm. Uh, but what we do know is that restaurants will continue to rely on some type of takeout or delivery to continue serving customers and communities. While we hope uh, while we all hope to return to some kind of normal, what is clear is that guests will continue to expect a smooth, convenient digital ordering experience. In today's webinar, we want to share with you some of the digital ordering capabilities that Squirrel 11, our latest point of sale version, can enable. These areas will include online ordering and takeout, third-party delivery, and contactless payments. As we go through this, I'll share different capabilities of each and what they look like and show you some examples. So the first thing we're going to talk about is online ordering and takeout. Okay. So ordering is a critical part of the service, and guests today are very comfortable with a variety of methods available, whether it's online, an app, or third party, or even via phone. Uh, consumers want to be able to order food regardless of location and with very little delay. Omnichannel ordering capabilities have quickly become a must-have for off-premise service. For restaurants, that convenience can come with several ups and downs. We have seen customers succeed using a variety of approaches. A simple online ordering page on your website or link to a website can be a straightforward and convenient method. A couple of important things you need to consider as you start to move forward. How does the menu get populated and updated? Ideally, this is automated so that changes in your POS are reflected online without any extra intervention. What is the order workflow? It should go into your POS, and with Squirrel version 11 it does, go directly to the kitchen um, and into packages as smoothly as possible. Um, with Squirrel 11, it Online orders will work exactly as if it had been entered at a terminal on site. And then how can guests pay? Online payment removes some friction and reduces contact points when doing takeout or delivery orders. The other, another thing to consider is how are modifiers, add-ons, and zero cost items handled? Ensuring that guests can include cutlery, condiments, napkins, and other essentials while easily ordering add-ons or modify items is an important component of online ordering. Luckily, this technology does exist today. At Squirrel, we have helped approximately 30% of our customer base implement online ordering in 
one or more levels of what we've already talked about over the last few months. It doesn't have to be complicated. And with Scroll version 11, it's not. Um, one of our existing customers, just to name an example, they are a long-time Scroll customer, fine dining. Uh, they're kind of a global um, customer. They are looking for a completely contactless option. So customers would come in, um, scan a QR code, look at the menu, place their order, and even do their own payment. Um, it's not something that we expected, but it's something that we're happy to work with them. And luckily, we have those that feature functionality available today. Uh, what we're going to show you now, okay, um, is a quick example of an online ordering website. This is one of Squirrel's existing customers. It's a mid-range uh, casual dining group. So your menu can be as detailed or as limited as you want it to be. Uh, we're going to take pictures, descriptions, prices all on there, let you go through the order process similar to what you might do um, on premise, adding protein, removing items from it, um, adding different pieces to your order, but just allowing you to go through and have a very similar access, but also see what you should be getting and what that food quality should be like, all while online in the comfort of your home or on your phone while you're sitting in traffic. Those different things to allow you to go through the entire piece um, through the payment uh, section. Okay. One of the other things that you guys can take advantage of today with Squirrel 11 um, is our takeout module. It's built into the software. It's easy to set up. Uh, this little video is just walking through a very basic setup for setting up a takeout department so that you can track those sales and do it outside of your normal operation. So if you've got a seated and a bar and you want to add takeout, so you can do that um, reporting piece separate. It's very easy to do. You can call support, they can walk you through it. You can also get in touch with customer service um, and they will help you work through that process. Okay. The next piece we're gonna to talk to is delivery and, or, and ordering and managing complexity, okay? So as you see by this slide, it can be pretty, it can be pretty challenging. Managing a host of order entry and acquisitions can create new challenges. We call them swivel chair or re-entering orders from multiple iPads and other sources is slow, chaotic, and very prone to human error. It causes scheduling issues and introduces errors. All of this can cost you money. Uh, these more complex scenarios are handled with omni-channel POS integration. Online ordering, third-party services, self-service kiosk, and mobile app orders can all be funneled into the Squirrel system and then managed appropriately. Payments can also be streamlined so that all channels processed through the payment processor um, are set up in Squirrel. Integrations like this can reduce errors introduced by rekeying orders from third-party services and help reduce costly mistakes while also expanding the capabilities of your organization. Okay. What we want to talk to you now is some of the challenges that we're seeing out of the marketplace with third-party uh, providers. Uh, manual entry of orders into the POS is error-prone. Orders are coming in through fax machines, on iPads, um, a number of different options, uh, though you can get busy, overlook them, or just be in a hurry and manually import them incorrectly. Each digital ordering channel requires a separate menu. That becomes overly challenging because then you're having to multiply, mul manage multiple menus in multiple locations, again, taking up your cycles as opposed to doing what you do best and that's actually running your property. Menu pricing changes can be extremely time consuming, especially if we're having to manage those on multiple platforms. And out of stock items, um, it's challenging and slow to get that updated within each platform. Okay. With Squirrel third-party delivery integration, it all becomes very easy. Whether you're using Uber Eats or Grubhub, Postmates, it's all going to come in through Chally and then go directly into the point of sale. Again, just like um, an order was placed on premise, it's going to go to the kitchen. It's going to pre create your requisitions, um, depending on if you're interested in label printers to make it a little bit easier with sticky tape or labels, we can support that as well then handing it off to those third-party deliveries becomes very easy and it becomes very streamlined, okay? The nice part about this is it's, it's gonna help you simplify your operation. Manage one menu in Squirrel, and then we will update your third-party platforms automatically. Uh, changes are automatically pushed to those platforms. So if you do a price change or menu edit um, or put something um, on inhibit, automatically update it. When a menu item is out of stock, everything's updated automatically, um, and all platforms are notified if the kitchen becomes backed up or you're actually taking on too many orders, okay? So 
The other piece that uh, streamlining this becomes is it makes it easy for us to ensure accurate payout to the vendors. We can match up order numbers versus their platform, and we don't just have to take their word for it or try to do a manual process. Um, so having it integrated with Squirrel gives you the ability to confirm those numbers very quickly and very accurately. Okay? The next piece that we want to talk about is contactless payments and ordering. Okay? The payment landscape was has been changing rapidly even before COVID-19, and it's done nothing but accelerate since. Guest preferences have been shifting to new payment methods such as mobile or NFC for some time. Some guests will still need to pay at the point of sale, at the point of sale for pickup, and in those cases, having the capability to accept payments in the most secure and sanitary fashion is required. Virtual kiosks, tap to pay mobile devices, and support for NFC payments are quickly becoming mandatory as the older swipe and sign payment process is not well suited to off-premise or contactless service. Dining rooms in North America have begun to reopen and are opening again, and this is good news. However, that doesn't mean that business will return to pre-COVID norms anytime soon. We need to think about a few things. Uh, menus. Shared menus that are not easily sanitized won't be acceptable. Consider one-use menus or menus that are easily and visibly cleaned. Shared devices and terminals. Staff are at particular risk for many businesses, um, and it will make sense to shift away from shared or fixed terminals to mobile devices that are assigned to one server for a shift and sanitize afterwards. This will also better support widely spaced dining setups and patios. Guest self-service. Similar to a virtual kiosk, a solution that allows a guest to order from their own mobile device and potentially pay can reduce the contact points throughout the service. Tap and NFC. Payments for many regions supporting complex payments is going to be a requirement for opening a dining area. Okay. Now, QR code and table side ordering is where it really gets interesting because the options are so vast. Uh, with QR codes, we've all been out to restaurants where you use your phone, you scan a QR to see the menu. Um, with some of the providers that we're working with, Xdine, Olo, um, Cassett or Megan, scanning those QR codes can do a number of things. It can take you directly to the on-site uh, or the, uh, the website menu. So you can place your own order and pay. Um, and the flexibility really comes is it's not just table. So yes, I can have one at a table. It can be stuck to the table or on a table tent. Um, it can also uh, be ev at, on every seat in a stadium. Uh, we've got a customer that is a casino that we're looking at a number of different options. One, there's a QR code at every gaming table seat so that they can take place that order and it come directly to them. Also having uh, food court areas where that there is a large sign that they go up and scan um, that will let them again place their order and then they pick it up from a pre-designated location for where their order is going to be delivered. So it really gives you a lot of options for how you can take this technology and implement it into really any type of business, small or large. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is virtual kiosk. Um, and the virtual kiosk, this triggers an interface to read the menu from your scroll point of sale um, or other restaurant POS systems. It does not require a specialty menu. Um, guests can then view the menu, place their order for immediate or future pickup, and pay directly from their phone via NFC tap, including mobile wallets such as Apple Pay or even Google Pay. Orders are pushed directly into your POS system, thus going through your printers and your normal processes. Restaurants can modify confirmation fields to ingest to include guest phone numbers, emails, names, card types for curbside pickup, um, and anything else for easier pickup. When the order is ready, the restaurant can contact the guest via field uh, via the fields mentioned above. Okay. Um, Squirrel version 11 and contactless payments. Squirrel version 11 works with uh, the latest and most secure contact payless terminals and devices that are out there. With Squirrel 11, you can work with a number of different credit card processors, partners who offer a range of pay at the counter, pay at the table, and payment terminals. All of these terminals are EMV compliant, which means that they are compatible with the latest chip and pin credit card technology that supports tap and pay payments such as Google Pay and Apple Pay. The devices can come Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and many can even become uh, cellular, which make it much easier to do uh, payments on the go, all of which can support Google and Apple Pay. Um, some cellular connectivity can even be used for delivery. Some of these terminals are smart terminals and even support apps like gift cards and doing guest surveys. The nice part about this is depending on your business, there is a solution. Like we talked about a tethered option, a, a wireless option from inside the building, and even a cellular option. 
We have a multi-unit customer today that has transitioned all of their properties to cellular, um, both inside and outside the restaurant. So they can take any unit, uh, to any table, to car side to go outside, and even their catering operations could grab one, take it off, and do payment on site. It just makes life much easier to not have to manage a multitude of different solutions, and they found that the cellular option uh, was what was best for them. Okay. So just to do kind of a quick recap, uh, we really hope this webinar has shown you several options like digital ordering and payments uh, that you should be considering adding to your operations. As we mentioned at the start, restaurant, hotels, resorts, um, or anyone really running any type of food and beverage option will need to focus on the digital experience as we move forward through COVID. From online ordering for curbside takeout or pickup, third-party delivery apps, contactless payments, or point of sale can become the center, our point of sale can become the center of the digital guest experience. Okay, so um, as I kind of wrap up my portion here, I just wanted to touch base on a couple of last items. Um, if you're already on Squirrel 11 today, you'll be able to access many of these capabilities right now. However, many of them are not compatible with older versions of Squirrel, such as Squirrel version 8 and 9. The good news is that if you're already on EasyCare, you always get access to the latest versions of Squirrel software. To make it even easier to upgrade, we're offering a number of incentives waiving fees uh, related to upgrading SQL drivers um, and installing new EMV payment drivers. Squirrel is waiving all remote implementation fees for upgrading your version of Squirrel and the host it runs on. We are offering free setup of new contactless payment devices. We are also offering free setup of online ordering contact, uh, online ordering. Uh, feel free to contact customer service team if you have a specific question about the capabilities you saw here today or if you would like to learn what your options are to upgrade. Finally, for many customers, you can reuse much of your existing hardware if it isn't too old. But if you need to upgrade to the latest terminal workstation, we offer hardware discounts of up to 35% for current customers. If you are interested in learning more, please reach out to our customer service team. And now I'm gonna hand it back to Megan. All right, great. Thank you so much, Patrick, uh, for that detailed overview of the features and options available to our Squirrel customers. Uh, looks like we had a few questions come in here, so I will let our senior product marketing manager, Cyrus, take over. Cyrus, go ahead. Great. Th thanks, Megan. Uh, so just as a reminder, if you have a question, just enter it into the chat panel in your uh, webinar uh, dashboard. Uh, and we do have a couple questions here. Um, we had a couple questions about if a recording will be sent out once the webinar is ended. So just as we said it, uh, earlier, uh, a recording will be sent um, along with a, a copy of the slides uh, in a follow-up email after the webinar. Uh, so our first question here is, who is Chowley associated with for a payment processor? Um, Patrick, can I, um, can I have you answer that one? Uh, well, we've implemented several of these, um, and they've been using different ones. So I think our best bet would probably be just to get an official list that hands out. Um, but I believe that it's working with Shift 4 and a couple of the others. So I think we just need to get a, a list that we can send out to everybody. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. And the next question here is, which credit card providers have been certified for NFC, tap and pay, et cetera, with Squirrel 11. Um, I'll take that one. Um, so uh, this question here uh, with Squirrel 11, we have uh, certified Squirrel 11 with a number of credit card uh, providers in the US. We have uh, certified with uh, with um, uh, with Elevon and Shift4. We have agreements with them. They do have pay at the table and pay at the counter uh, devices that all support uh, the latest uh, NFC tap and go uh, devices. Um, in Canada, uh, we are um, uh, we work with uh, also certified with a number of uh, processors in, in Canada, um, such as um, uh, Moneris and Elevon. Um, and so we're also working with uh, working to add some additional. Uh, processors as well. So reach out to uh, Squirrel and we can definitely uh, show you all of the options. Okay. Another 
question here is where can we find more information regarding the waived uh, SQL or SQL fees? So that question, uh, so as um, this is in reference to uh, when for a number of systems that are out there to upgrade to score 11, there is a, a requirement to upgrade the Microsoft uh, SQL or SQL licenses. Um, reach out to your customer success rep and they will uh, give you more information about um, your particular configuration, how we can um, help you with some of those fees. Okay, got a few questions here. I'm just going to go through. Would the system be able to redeem gift cards as a form of payment? Patrick, do you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, whether, you know, if you're looking to do it online, then we're going to need to look at one of our gift card providers. Um, Data Candy is probably one of the ones that we're using most today, but we do have several gift card options for you for um, online redemption so that you can do credit card, also a gift card, loyalty points, things like that. It's a full version, a full suite. Um, and I think we're, one of our next seminars is actually going to be talking about uh, gift cards and loyalty within the digital experience in one of our upcoming webinars. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. And we've got another question here. Uh, for third-party delivery, what – actually, hang on. D d Okay, um, so do you think that we could use Chali for a third-party uh, reservation system? Patrick, can you uh, take that one as well? I, you know, I haven't heard anyone using it that way. Normally, with the online orders, it's we're actually placing the orders. You can choose how many orders you want to take based on time period, 15-minute, 30-minute, hour uh, long pieces. But I haven't heard of anybody using it like a reservation system. So we can certainly pose the question for that. I don't know if it's uh, available today or on their roadmap, but it's a great question. I just haven't had anybody head down that path yet, but we will definitely look into it. Okay. Okay, and Patrick, we've got a, a couple questions about third-party delivery and, uh, and how it works. Um, for third-party deliveries, what happens if the kitchen gets backed up? Uh, and there was another related question, very similar to this, where, you know, the question here is, you know, my concern is what will happen if we get a rush and many guests could use all that option at once? Uh, this could crash our kitchen. Is there a filter to limit how many orders can be entered at once? Yeah, and most people start out with smaller versions. Like they'll say within 15 minutes how many orders they're going to take based on the time of day. So you may take more orders between 11 and 12 than say you do between 12 and 2, whether that's in 15 minute, 30 minute, or hour intervals. So you get to control that. Um, so if all of the orders that are available between 12 and 12.30 are already full, when people are online ordering and they try to get it at 12.30, they'll say, nope, your next available is, op is 1 o'clock. So that's where you can actually do that. If it's something that you've got a little bit more wide open, you have the ability to go in and kind of tell the system to slow it down, um, that it'll come in. But most people are controlling that by saying, I want to allow X number of orders between these time periods. So if it's an hour between 11 and 12, I'm going to take 10. Between 12 and 1, I'm going to take 5. I want 5 more. That's my busy time. I know I'm busy, but I do want the extra revenue. And you can tweak that and you can change it so that you can offer more. So as you get into it, maybe start a little bit smaller, and then as your operation gets more used to it, if you're adding in a label printer um, to where you're actually you know, sticking the orders to it for the third-party delivery person to get or your takeout people, it just gives you that ability to have control. So essentially think of it as throttling. You get to throttle how much is coming through uh, based on time period. Hey, thanks, Patrick. There's quite a few questions on uh, third-party delivery, so definitely a lot of interest in that. Um, so we have another question just related to delivery again. What delivery platforms are supported? Uh, so for, the, for that one, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Patrick mentioned earlier in the presentation, we do work with, uh, when it comes to Score 11, we do work with a uh, integration service called Chowley. And, and Chowley, uh, one of the great things about Chali is that uh, they uh, 
integrate with a large number of delivery platforms. They do integrate with, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they have a, a pretty uh, comprehensive list, including in this uh, Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash, um, um, uh, Postmates, um, all of those are supported and they also support a, a number of local uh, providers as well um, and regional uh, suppliers as well. So I think the the best answer, they're always updating their list. So definitely reach out to uh, Squirrel so you can get the, the latest um, lists of supported delivery providers um, if there's a particular one that you are looking to we can definitely uh, work with you on that as well and then um, then we have another one here about third-party is it possible to explain more in depth how third-party delivery integration works if someone makes an order off uber eats will it automatically ring into the point of sale is there any tracking data for drivers Patrick, could you um, could you answer that one? Uh, sure, and that piece kind of comes up in a, in a few different modules. So within the system, when it's coming through, it's coming in through our Squirrel POS gateway, right? So when an order comes in from them, it's coming through our gateway and it's hitting your system exactly like as if it was rung up on a terminal on site. Um, and from there, then we'll print up the requisitions. We'll print the labels of the label printer. You can do your packing, set it off, and then you hand it off um, to whoever the delivery service driver is. Um, within our system, there's not really a driver tracking piece. And of course, we do have it in Squirrel CRM if you want to do your own takeout and delivery. Um, we can do that, but the kind of driver tracking and all that would be um, something that you would touch base with uh, your provider. So who's doing that piece for you? Um, that's not integrated into the system. We're just bringing the orders in, so they're going to print on your requisition with no extra input, so you can then package it off and then hand it off to them um, within the system, and it depends on, you know, the third party that's coming in. Um, sometimes the orders will actually show on the terminal for a period of time if you want to be able to look at them. Uh, the requisitions will have information on it, like the customer's name, their phone number, their address, um, above and beyond the regular information so that you know where it's going. It'll also tell you if it's paid or not paid. Um, some of the groups, if it's more takeout than delivery and you're doing a combination of the two, um, Xdine is one that you can actually order on theirs and pay online, but you can also choose to pay in person. Um, and those requisitions will come up and say paid, not paid. But for any type of driver tracking information, you'd need to talk to um, your third-party provider and see what they're offering. Okay, thank, thanks, Patrick. So there, there are a number of questions here about the um, the upgrade to Score 11, uh, what it involves. Um, so I'm going to try to address some of these questions. Uh, one of them is, you know, I have older uh, terminals, uh, specifically uh, WS9 series terminal. Can I upgrade to uh, Score 11? Uh, Patrick, do you want to take that 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 question? Sure. Yeah, our workstation nines are upgradable. Depending on how old they are, they may require a bit of a Linux image upgrade, uh, but we have been working to make sure that we can, those workstation nines will work with Squirrel version 11. So yes, we can. We would just need to verify the terminal, the version. Uh, we'll want to you know, verify the Linux version that's on it, and if we need to do an upgrade there, from there, the upgrade's pretty easy. So the short answer is yes. So another question here is, uh, what is involved in a uh, upgrade to Squirrel uh, 11? Um, so there's a number of questions that are related to that one. So um, the answer to this one is that uh, it, it really does depend on your current uh, setup. There are going to be a number of options depending on the um, you know, how long you've had the system and the the age. Uh, for example. Uh, and for most customers, an upgrade will uh, involve a simple replacement of your host PC that's already been pre-installed with a new version of software that will allow you to really minimize the disruption to your, uh, your current uh, setup. Um, but you know, ultimately, we're going to work with you to make sure the upgrade is as seamless and easy as possible to you. Um, so our a guidance here is to to definitely reach out to your customer success rep to find out the exact requirements uh, for your upgrade. Uh, can I throw in a couple of other things there, Cyrus? Real yeah, quick? yeah, definitely. Um, within the upgrade uh, to 11.0, you you are going to get a SQL upgrade. 
Um, so if you're on older versions, you're probably on SQL 2008. Uh, we're going to upgrade you to SQL 2016. We do have a uh, newer version of 11 that's coming out that will also have SQL 2019 um, that's in there. The other thing that you guys can consider if you want to head down the path is if you're an older system, do you want a GUI upgrade? If you're still on the older blue and gold um, GUIs, we can upgrade it to the new uh, GUI that we're rolling out to everybody else. It's a, it's a little bit more muted. Uh, the colors are a little bit different. Uh, makes it so your terminals don't scream on the point of sale. That is an option out there for you as well um, when you're upgrading. If you don't want to do that, you won't notice any difference. It's just a matter of putting the new features on screen. Uh, but if we do an upgrade today and pull your existing database over, um, there'll be things that are going on in the background, but nobody would even notice the difference from a front of the house feature perspective if you were just upgrading but not adding anything. If you're on version 8, 9, 10, um, up into 11, there's several hundred new features for you to take advantage of. Okay, sorry. Okay, no, no thank, thank you, Patrick. Um, so another uh, question here is, um, how do I know what version of Squirrel I, I'm on? Patrick. Uh, when you log into your browser, uh, the bottom right-hand corner of your browser, about two-thirds of the way over, you'll actually see the version number. So it'll probably say, you know, um, you know, 6.1, 6.2. There's a number of different things that it can say. Also, if you're in your browser and you go to the support tab, um, typically it'll show you your version number in there as well. Um, if you just can't find it, you can always call support and we can connect in and show you exactly where that is. But bottom of your browser screen, right-hand side, you'll see a version and the number after it. Okay. Okay. Um... Just looking at a few questions here. You have a, some questions related to takeout. Um, so Patrick, um, this, the question is, is the takeout module similar to setting up a department? Yes, essentially that's what it is. You're creating or converting a, a most people build a new department, they call it takeout, and then we go through those steps to actually build the department like normal and flag it as a takeout or to-go department. Um, you can take an existing revenue center um, and use those same flags in there and turn it into a takeout department with little changes. Just depends on your preferences. And customer service can help you with that uh, or point you where you need to go if you want to make those changes. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a few questions uh, around uh, contactless uh, payments. Um, one of the questions here is, for contactless payment hardware, do we need to buy it or is it rented? Uh, so this, the options available to you are, are very much going to be dependent on the payment processor that uh, you decide to work with. Uh, so we do work with a number of payment uh, partners do, do um, have options to uh, rent or buy. Um, so definitely reach out to um, us if, uh, if you'd like more information on the payment processor options available. Yeah, and just to add to that, some of the processors have specials. There was one kind of at the beginning of the year, one of the processors was, was actually that if you flipped over to them, they gave you free hardware um, and it had a lifetime warranty. If it had to be changed out because models were eliminated, all of that was included. They are very competitive now and it's a good time to look at all the different options um, not just the fee for processing, but what they're offering for hardware to figure out what's best for you and your operation. Okay. Okay. Um, I think, looking at the time, I think that's all the time we have for questions right now. I, I do realize if uh, we didn't get a chance to answer all of your questions, we'll definitely reach out uh, directly to um, uh, after the webinar to follow up. Um, at this point, I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Megan to um, say a few words to wrap us up. Okay, great. Uh, thank you to our attendees for submitting those questions. And thank you, Patrick and Cyrus, for those informative answers. Um, just to wrap things up here, like Cyrus said, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will be following up with a short post webinar survey. Uh, with this being our first monthly webinar, we would really love to hear any feedback you can provide to us. 
We will also be following up with an email to view the recording and the slides in the next day or so. And lastly, please stay tuned for an invitation to our next monthly webinar in the next few weeks. Uh, we will be conducting these on the first Thursday of every month. If you're interested in upgrading or have any questions about your options, please reach out to your sales representative or reseller. If you're unsure of who that is or have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to our customer success team, uh, customer success at squirrelsystems.com as shown here on the slide. We will also be posting a link in the chat if you would like to make an appointment with a customer success representative. Thank you again, everyone, for your participation and have a great rest of your day.